Now, when this deck was first built, decking installed perpendicular to these joists can feel really rigid. And that's probably how this house felt early in its life, right? But let's simplify what's happening here. The bottom edge of this wall is restrained at the foundation, like a ledger to a house. But the top of this first floor wall is not restrained, and so it's able to move. And the goal is for opposite sides not to move from each other. So let's go back to decks now and look at the deck. This ledger is restrained from moving side to side by the ledger fasteners. These two sides are restrained in the direction toward the ledger by the braced walls of the house. And their restraint away is going to be dependent on connections we'll talk about in the next session. I want to talk about this side. What's bracing this side from moving back and forth? Because connections aren't going to help us in this example. There's currently nothing in the IRC that provides for this design. So I'm just going to discuss some mechanics of it and some various methods that have been used in regard to deck bracing. Now, I hope we can all understand the bracing that's happening here, right? This outer edge cannot move side by side due to the braced walls on the house. So if we compare that to our graphic here, it's basically like two giant boulders, the wall being built in between them. But what if it's just one inside corner like this? Well, now it's more like a deck like this, right? With one boulder. And these sides pointing towards the ledger, well, just the same way they're not going to move, this outer side moving towards this boulder is also not going to move. And again, we'll talk in the next session about the movement away from the boulder and how bracing can be achieved in this example, but we would want our connection maybe in a different place. All right, remember this photo and how effectively it kept this top of the wall from moving? That's the magic of triangles. Good luck changing the shape of a triangle without breaking it apart. And that's how angled decking can brace a deck. But now the decking fasteners do more than just hold down the decking, right? They also have to keep the triangle from breaking apart. Now, just to get a pulse of how much difference angled decking makes over perpendicular decking, take a look at this link. It's provided in the self-study of this session. And take a peek at the American Wood Council's document for wind and seismic design. Lateral loads, right? Now, of course, it's not related to decks, but we can go to table 4.2.4, and it provides shear capacities for lumber sheathing on a wall. And you can see that there's horizontal and diagonal installations provided. Now, if we zoom in on the values of resistance, we can see that we get six times the resistance with diagonal boards over horizontal. That's the pulse and understanding I want you to grab. But remember also, the decking fasteners are now part of this equation, just like nails are included here in this table. My name is Glenn Mathewson. Thanks for learning with me. This course has been provided to you by buildingcodecollege.com, where we go beyond the words.